Okay, our next chapter is on Europe. Europe is a densely populated uh, realm, uh, highly urbanized with uh, very high levels of gender-related development. It's centrally located with a number of peninsulas and islands, and, and the rivers are navigable, uh, which, it made, uh, made, which makes Europe uh, easy to develop. Climate. You'll notice that the climate of Europe generally is uh, uh, excellent for agriculture and for development. Uh, the area in green shows you what we call the marine coastal climate, which is uh, relatively mild, even though they're higher in uh, uh, latitude than other parts of the world. It does very well. And you can see all the different uh, climate regions, Northwest Europe, Eastern Europe, Mediterranean Europe. Same way in the Mediterranean. Uh, one of the issues of climate obviously has to do with climate change, uh, and climate change is a quite normal process, and Europe has had temperatures rising in some areas and decreasing in others. There's a protocol called the Kyoto Protocol in, in the idea of trying to control carbon emissions. Uh, frankly, carbon emissions, in my view, and other geographers, uh, is not a factor for major climate change. Some people think it is, and there's a big debate on that. The science community is not in consensus on that. As a result, many nations have not agreed to the Kyoto Protocol of controlling CO2 emissions. The big problem with CO2 emissions, frankly, is the pollution end of it, uh, and controlling pollution is a problem. You'll notice the uh, physiographical regions uh, of Europe with the mountainous regions in brown. The green area indicates the rather flat to rolling landscape, central plateaus, upper elevation, moving into the alpine purple area, which are the mountain systems. So here are, uh, when you look at the different landforms that make up Europe, here are the northwestern uplands, a picture of that. Then the alpine Europe area, the mountain building. Of course, the mountains are created when you have two tectonic plates crashing into one another. One mountain plate goes over another, creating the Alps, and the other major mountain systems are created the same way. Uh, great resources, hydroelectric potential, agriculture is varied, and tourism is very important. The central plateaus are the major area of coal fields for Europe, and of course if it wasn't for coal and fossil fuels, Europe would not have developed uh, in the Industrial Revolution. Uh, of course, the Black Forest are very, very important, so we moved away from burning firewood to burning coal. We move away from burning coal to burning natural gas, uh, and you see how energy has changed over time with less pollution and more uh, and cheaper costs for people. The northern European lowlands, where there's great area for farming. Obviously, one of the areas uh, is concerning the environment, managing uh, landscapes, try to not deforest areas too much. Uh, the Middle uh, Evil Europe was an area of resettlement and um, affected very much by a cooling phase called the Little Ice Age. Interestingly enough, uh, we are moving out of an ice age right now, so we are actually warming uh, the climate in the world, which has produced um, higher levels of agriculture development uh, and, um, and population growth. The historical landscapes, as you can see that picture, uh, the development of the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, then the movement into the medieval Europe, where you have a feudal system which affected agriculture. The development of, of mercantile capitalism, which you'll learn about in the chapter. And then, of course, in the 16th and 17th century, the age of discovery, when the Europeans began to innovate, spread business and technology. As their knowledge of geography grew, then they began to explore and shift the orientation to the Atlantic part of the world as opposed to going uh, to the east, uh, to um, over the landscape to Asia. Colonization was a big uh, issue during this time. Capitalism began to flourish. Resources were needed from abroad, so European countries looked for mineral resources. Europeans began to, to develop uh, trading with their increased nav navigation. They began to look for gold and silver in the New World. And so industrial capitalism began to grow and develop, leading Europe to become a world power. The Industrial Revolution took place 
with the uh, introduction of coal and natural gas, uh, and you begin to see waves of technology moving from England toward the east and to the south. You also have a period of imperialism where empires began to spread across the oceans. Uh, some disruption with this was obviously the World Wars, World War I, the Great Depression in the 1930s, and World War II. Then you have the rebuilding after war, the Great Marshall Plan the United States used to help rebuild Germany after World War II. Unfortunately, the Europeans and the Russians began to uh, flirt around with social socialism, state socialism, uh, which caused more economic problems. With the advancement of communism in Eastern Europe and Russia, you begin to see uh, a separation of those two areas, the famous Iron Curtain, which separated the East from the West. Uh, the communists began to practice the command economy, a co an economy that was controlled by the state. Um, industrial growth was very slow, and you began to see the city-states becoming very drab, and uh, obviously communism collapsed. Uh, once it collapsed in the 1990s, you begin to see free market reforms coming in, but that's been a slow process, uh, trying to get foreign investment into these countries. Then you had to deal with inflation, unemployment, homelessness, and so you'll find in Europe today the countries are still struggling. Uh, other countries are trying to integrate and are, and are having some success. You can see the economics of Europe, 35% uh, of the world exports, 43% of the world imports. High levels of material consumption in Europe, uh, even though you are finding some regional income disparities, that's due to the success of free enterprise in some parts of Europe and more state socialism in other parts of Europe. The welfare states become a problem in Europe with high levels of taxation which drains money that could be used for economic development uh, and that also creates unemployment problems. One of the ways that Europe is trying to compete with the world is the creation of the European Union, which you can see on this graphic. Uh, and uh, that's a big debate even today. The Europeans are trying to create uh, an economic uh, monetary fund such as the euro which is being accepted by some of the countries and uh, disliked by others. You're beginning to see more of a technology interest in Europe so they're moving away from hard industries into technology. Uh, there's a disinvestment in some parts of Europe uh, and a decline in traditional manufacturing. In other parts of Europe you're finding uh, world development, uh, agriculture and industries being developed um, and people are becoming highly urbanized, moving away from the farms into the cities. You're finding a, a, a continued rise in nation states with regionalism uh, in the area. Ethnic minorities are, are moving in. Uh, there are some problems with that, as you've noticed on the news. Um, ethnic violence because ethnic groups are moving in and don't particularly want to unify with the other European cultures, creating all kinds of ethnic conflict. A lot of diversity in Europe with religion and language, as you can tell on this map. Uh, the important groups of Roman Catholicism, Protestantism, the movement of Islam into Europe. Uh, and yet there's still a, a, an interesting decrease in the religious life of some Europeans. Again, you can also notice the diversity in language. As a result of the Enlightenment, you began to see all kinds of social and political movements, uh, the political movements of Karl Marx and eventual communism, fascism under Hitler, uh, and then as a result of that, you begin to see the European identity developing, uh, immigration laws were created because people are trying to move around and there, there, there was also some development in uh, gender equality and women in society. You can tell by this map uh, Europe is highly urbanized, very densely populated, so people are living where the landscape is well suited for agriculture and climate. 
One of the big problems, of, obviously, of Europe is the migration of Muslims from the Middle East into Europe, um, into the Balkan areas, the old Ottoman Empire, which was Turkey. Um, this migration of people looking for peaceful settlements, looking for jobs. The problem is a resistance to cultural assimilation uh, and discrimination practices in Europe. And we're beginning to see some of that here in the United States. Europe is obviously foundational with towns and cities. It's highly urbanized, as you can tell by the two pictures. Big problem in Europe is the aging population, which is less tax revenue. So if you have a state socialism economy, it requires a lot of high taxes, but there are few people with jobs. And so you can see why nation states like Greece and Ireland and Spain are running into problems because they need a younger population to be able to fund the aging population. That's the end of chapter two.